today we are going to make the most delicious soup I have ever tasted in my life. I am not kidding you. And the funny thing is, I had never had it before I started testing the recipe. Welcome to the salted pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today we are gonna make a Greek meatball soup. Oh, it is so easy to make. It is so delicious. You're going to want to make it right away. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is get my herbs chopped up. What I have here is a couple sprigs of mint that grow out in the garden. I really recommend you growing some mint. It's super easy to grow, uh, but if not, you can buy it at the grocery store. And then I have some oregano that also was fresh, but you don't have to use fresh. You can use uh, the dried oregano. I've done that in one of my test batches and it worked just fine. I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of oregano. You can use one teaspoon of oregano. As far as the mint, there really isn't a dried version uh, that will give you the same results. So definitely pick up some fresh mint. Or if you don't like mint, you can omit it, it's fine. It just gives this soup and these meatballs this spectacular flavor. All right, so let me go ahead and chop these up. Right, I'm gonna add that mint, it's about two tablespoons, to one pound of ground beef. And I've got a kind of a funny story about the ground beef. We have been grinding our own ground beef because it's been difficult to find in the grocery stores. And so we always, you know, we'll buy full pieces of meat and kind of break them down ourselves. So, and then we'll grind some ground beef. And so we had so much ground beef, I mean, so much ground beef that I was like, I have to do some recipes with ground beef. And that's how I stumbled across this Greek soup. I mean, like it, it didn't just pop into my head. It was something that I could use the ground beef for. And oh my gosh, I am just so thankful that I found it because it is unbelievably good. All right, now let's get the, the oregano chopped up. I'm only gonna use about one a uh, tablespoon of the oregano. Like I said, if you wanted to use dry, you can use one teaspoon. All right, there we go. So let me go ahead and bring this up here. To the uh, meat mixture, we're gonna add one egg, one large egg. A few seasonings, and I mean a few, just salt and pepper. One teaspoon of sea salt and a half of a teaspoon of black pepper. One half of a finely diced Vidalia onion, and I tried to get them as small as I could uh, because they're gonna go right into the meatball, so you don't want big chunks of onion. We need two to three garlic cloves, but you know, you can use as many or as few as you like. Um, but I found two or three does the trick pretty well. I love this garlic press because you don't even have to peel the garlic. Those cloves were a little smaller, so that's why I put two in. All right. Perfect. Okay, now, the last ingredient that's gonna go in before we form our meatballs is rice. I know, it's odd, but trust me, it's so unique, it's so delicious. So we have a quarter cup of basmati rice. Now you need to get a long grain rice, and I think basmati fits the bill perfectly for this recipe, so I'm just gonna use a quarter cup of it though, so a very small amount. Now, if you wanted this to be low carb, you could omit the rice, I don't think it's gonna make that much difference in the recipe, but, um, you know, it's kind of cool the way the meatballs come out because I don't know if you've ever heard of porcupine meatballs. I hadn't until probably a few months ago, but you put rice in the meatballs and then the little rice kind of sticks out. So it's kind of neat. All right, so mix with your hands or whatever you want to mix with. Just mix the meat up really well so that all these ingredients incorporate. And then some people form the meatballs and put them in the refrigerator for a little while, um, or just put this meat mixture in the refrigerator for a little while. You can certainly do that. Um, 
but I haven't been. I've just been going ahead and making the meatballs up right away and getting them into the soup. And it's worked out fine. They smell amazing. The mint, oh my goodness, it's so, so good. All right, let me go ahead and wash my hands and we're gonna form the meatballs and get them in to the Ninja Foodi. Now, if you didn't have a pressure cooker, because we are gonna go under pressure for this soup. If you didn't have a pressure cooker, don't worry about it. You can make this on the stove top, no problems. And in my written recipe, which is on my website, I will certainly give those details because it's just a little bit longer of a simmer time. All right, right before I form the meatballs, I'm gonna go ahead and add the broth to the pot. This is four cups of chicken stock, but honestly, you can use water too. Um, or a vegetable stock or, you know, whatever you wanted. But I found, I like the chicken stock the best. So I like the flavor of it. I think it just adds a, another richness kind of to the dish. So I'm going to go with that. But water works fine. All right, so I'm going to use a small scoop. This is one from Pampered Chef. So it is about... I don't know, maybe two teaspoons or so. Um, I found that I like this size the best for the, the soup. I think traditionally they are, the meatballs are made a little bit bigger and I've tried them uh, like more of a, I guess a walnut size. And I think they, they were just a little too big for me. So that's personal preference. Um, we're gonna go under low pressure for seven minutes. That is based on this size, which is, you know, about, maybe the size of a, of a quarter, okay, around. Um, if you go a little bit bigger, it's perfectly fine, but you might wanna increase your pressure cook time to maybe nine minutes or something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get these formed up. And I do try to kind of press them a little bit more than I would like if I'm making a burger because I don't want them to fall apart in my soup. And if I have any big pieces of mint or something. I just try to get that inside the meatball a little bit, but you know, it doesn't really make a difference. I'm spending a lot of time with this one. I don't usually spend that much time. All right, throw that right in there. All right, so took about 10 minutes or so to make all those meatballs and just make sure that they are under the water as much as possible. All right, that looks good. Some of the onions kind of float out. Don't worry about that. Some of the mints kind of float. Don't worry about that. It's all going to be flavor in our soup. All right, I'm going to wash my hands real quick and then we're going to get this pot under pressure and I'm going to talk about the sauce that we're going to add because there's a lemon sauce that goes into this and oh, it's going to blow your mind. It is so good. All right, so once all the meatballs are in, then go ahead and put your lid on. All right, so we're gonna select the pressure uh, cook, and we want to go down to low. Now, we don't normally do that, especially with soups. We almost always pressure cook on high, but because of the meatballs in here, we wanna go on low so that they don't um, fall apart. So we want a little bit lower of a temperature. And we're gonna take it to seven minutes. So seven minutes on low pressure, if your meatballs are the size of mine. If your meatball's a little bit bigger, you might wanna go up to eight minutes, okay? All right, so we're gonna, oh, and make sure you turn the valve in the back to seal. And it'll take a little bit of time to heat up this, uh, the broth in there, even whether you're using water or the broth. Now, sometimes people like to turn on the sear saute and heat up the broth um, or water to make the time to pressure a little bit quicker, and that's perfectly fine to do. However, time to pressure is cook time. So as soon as this pot starts heating that, that liquid in there, it's cooking your food, not as, as um, quickly, of course, it's not as hot in there as it, as it is under pressure, but it is cooking the food. So that is built into my recipes. So when I say time to pressure, you know, it's with room temperature, usually liquid in there. So if you heat it up, you might need to increase your time a little bit, okay? Just by a minute or two, all right? All right, there we go. All right, so while that's building pressure, Let's talk about the lemon sauce. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's so easy to make. You only need two eggs, whole eggs, large ones, and two lemons. Now you could use one lemon or two lemons. I tested the recipe with one lemon and it was really good. I mean, it was delicious, but when I tried it with two, I really liked that extra boost of lemon. So that's perfectly up to you, one or two lemons. 
All right, and then we have a little cornstarch. Now, I'm gonna talk about the cornstarch a little bit. I didn't test the recipe the first time with the cornstarch, and I found that it got really nice and thick without even adding it. However, I used the blender to whip the lemon sauce up, the eggs and the lemon juice. And I think that that created, it was thicker. And I'm gonna show you just to hand whisk it. So what I did with the other uh, test batches that I did, because this is like easier than dirtying a blender, right? Is I put a little cornstarch, two teaspoons of cornstarch in there, and then it thickened up beautifully. So that's what we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack the eggs in here. I guess you could zest these lemons if you wanted to add extra zest into your soup. That would be perfectly fine, but I haven't been doing that, so I'm not gonna do that today either. Um, what I will do though is go ahead and roll my lemons. You could also heat them up in the microwave to really loosen that juice so I get a lot of lemony goodness out of them. Go ahead and cut them in half, and then use whatever you have or your hand to get all the juice out. And I don't measure, so, you know, it, it really doesn't make a difference. If you think that your lemons are drier and you're not getting a good, you know, tablespoon or two out of each half of the lemon, then maybe you want to add in three. So just use your judgment. Um, you can add a little bit more lemon directly to the soup as well, if you want to. All right, let me cut the other one and do the same thing. And I'm just gonna whisk this up a little bit. My bowl's probably not quite big enough. And add in the two teaspoons of cornstarch. I am gonna have to transfer this into a bigger bowl. I just remembered we have to temper this, so I'll do that in just a minute. But let me get this mixed up. So just whisk it until all the clumps are out. When I get it in a bigger bowl, I'm gonna whisk it a little bit more aggressively. All right. All right, easy breezy there. So just whip those uh, eggs with the lemon juice and put in the cornstarch and make sure that there are no lumps in there. And now we're just gonna wait. I'm starting to hear things moving around in there. So the water starting, or the broth is starting to boil. So we'll be coming up to pressure pretty soon. And then we'll do a five minute natural release. And during that time, I will get the little extra special ingredients that we're gonna add to this soup to really take it to the next level. They're not traditional, but they are delicious. All right, so added ingredient number one, two carrots. Thinly, thinly sliced, because we want them to cook in no time. I did try putting them in when we went under pressure, and they were just too soft. So I really recommend putting them in after the pressure cook time, which is up now, and we are just counting up five minutes of natural release. So while that's happening, I'm going to thinly slice my carrots. I just go through, and I'm just trying to get them at least like a quarter of an inch or less. So some of them are a little thinner, and that's okay. All right, so we just have two more minutes to go and then I'm gonna manually release the rest of the pressure. We're gonna remove the meatballs and I'll explain that in just a second. All right, so the red pin in the back depressed. Now yours might be silver, no worries. They are two different colors, so uh, mine is red. And I'm gonna go ahead and Take the lid off. All right, now you can see some strange looking meatballs with little uh, rice, pieces of rice popping out. And I'm gonna remove them. This is not absolutely necessary, okay? Because I have not done this in my previous test batches. But I noticed um, that when I was trying to simmer to get these carrots cooked just for a few minutes, some of the uh, rice was coming out, some of the meatballs were falling apart, and I mean, it was still great. So I just decided, let's go through this step of going ahead and removing the meatballs. 
All right, that looks good. So one thing I wanted to mention real quick about the meat that I used. Mine, I, I ground myself, so I don't even know if it was 80, 20, or, or even a little bit fattier than that. I'm thinking it was probably about maybe a 70, 30, or something like that. But anyway, I would definitely get 80, 20 for this. You want that fat. There are hardly any ingredients in here. You want that fat to flavor your soup. Okay, so now I'm just gonna throw these carrots in and go ahead and heat up. I'm gonna go on sear saute on high is fine. And it's gonna take no time at all to cook these carrots, maybe five minutes. All right, so while this boils and starts to cook our carrots, we're gonna go ahead and temper the eggs and the lemon juice. We have to do this. If you just poured this mixture into this hot soup, it would start to cook the eggs, okay? It'd be more like an egg drop soup, and that's not what we're going for. We want a nice silky and creamy soup. So we're going to temper the eggs. And you do that by using the stock in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out a ladle full that's actually a half a ladle full and that's fine. Go ahead and pour it in as you move the mixture around. So what we're doing is bringing this mixture closer to the temperature of that mixture so it doesn't get shocked and start to cook. And I'll do this probably about three or four times. We're gonna go ahead and add this to our soup and I just stir the soup as I add this in. This is where all the magic happens here. All right. Now, the broth will start to thicken as it heats but I don't want it to really be boiling at a rapid boil. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my sear saute down to medium. And I like to stir it. Then we'll get those meatballs back in and finish up our soup with the last ingredient that is not usually used, and that is some spinach. I just found that that green color just, oh my gosh, made this soup so beautiful in a bowl. Um, and it tastes delicious. So of course, you can leave out the carrots, you can leave out the spinach, that's perfectly fine. And it'll still be, it'll still be yummy. But if you like these two ingredients, I think you'll find that they really are a nice addition. All right, so it's starting to thicken now, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in the meatballs. It's still not as thick as I want, but um, it's starting to thicken. So I'm gonna add in, back in these meatballs, and I do it kind of carefully because I don't wanna break them up. Well, just dump them in, that's all you need to do. They didn't break up, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> All right, I think we're good here. Now, you could make this soup as thick as you want. So if you wanted to thicken it up, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off now. Um, if you wanted to thicken it more than this, you certainly can. Just add in a little bit more cornstarch. As a matter of fact, you know what? I might just do that right now, just to thicken it up just a little bit more. Not too much. I like it so it's um, less, than, less thick than, let's say, like a corn chowder but it's obviously a little bit thicker than um, a thin soup would be. So this is looking really good, but I think I'm just gonna thicken it up just a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab one teaspoon of cornstarch, whisk it up with a little bit of this broth and then get it in there and we'll probably put the heat back on and let it thicken just for a minute. Just make sure all of your cornstarch is dissolved in this and not lumpy, because if it's lumpy, then it will make your soup lumpy. All right, that looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and just pour that back in there and stir it around and we should have some more thickening in no time at all. All 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, turn the heat back on just for a few minutes and taste one of these carrots and see how the carrots are doing. Now this is already starting to thicken up really nicely. Looks so good. Let's get a carrot out here and see if they are cooked enough. I think they are. Just put that right down there. All right. Mm-hmm. No, they still have a bite to them, and I like it that way. If you like them softer, you're going to have to simmer a little bit longer. All right, that looks like a good texture there. All right, I'm just going to let that cook just for a few more minutes and get this cleaned up. We're going to put our spinach in and get to tasting our Greek meatball soup. All right, so let's put in some spinach. Now, how much you add is totally up to you. I just do a couple handfuls usually, and we just put it in. This is baby spinach. If you were gonna use um, you know, the bigger leaves of spinach, you might need to put it on a low heat just to cook it for a minute. All right, that's good. Put this, I've, I have the foodie off, and it's go the heat from the soup is going to wilt the spinach perfectly. So I just stir it around and get the spinach kind of under under the soup, and I'm trying to be careful because you can break up your meatballs if you're a little aggressive with stirring, which is not the end of the world, but we like to see the, the full meatball in the soup. All right, isn't that just gorgeous? I mean, gorgeous. And this recipe makes eight cups of soup, okay, and you could probably double that. I don't see why you couldn't, um, you know, use two pounds of meatballs and, and eight cups of, of stock and you'd be, you'd be fine. If you have the five quart small one, just make a single batch though. Look at that. Oh, it is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, now if you wanted your spinach a little bit softer, um, just turn the heat on low and let it simmer a little bit longer. All right, now the, now the meatballs are coated in that nice broth. Oh, it just looks so good. Make sure you serve it with some nice crusty bread. This was a mistake. I was trying to make a French bread and uh, trying to get like a lot of those, those really holes in there, but this turned out really dense but I air fried it for a few minutes and it's perfect with this soup. This is nice, dense bread, chewy, crusty bread. It's perfect. All right, star of the show, a meatball. Mmm. Unbelievable. A hint of mint. Oh my gosh, they are perfectly seasoned. So delicious. All right, let's check out a carrot. Make sure they're cooked all the way. Mmm, perfect. They still have a little bit of a, a bite to them, but they're soft, you know, but they're not mushy. Again, it's your soup. Make it how you want. If you want your carrot softer, cook it longer. If you want them really soft, just put them in at the beginning. Cut them a little bit thicker and put them in at the beginning and pressure cook. They were good in the soup when I did it that way. They were just a little softer than I like. All right, and now the spinach. Mmm. Unbelievable. It is so good. And it's so cool how the rice cooks right in the meatball. I just absolutely love that. All right, I'm going to top it off with a bite of this crunchy, crusty bread. And I really hope you give this one a try because it might sound like it's an odd soup, but I just cannot stress enough how delicious it is. So, as always, make it yours and make it delicious. Mmm.